So now what I want to do is go ahead and draw the environment diagram. It's going to be pretty similar to what we did last time. The only difference is inside the procedure itself where we create methods and create the dispatch procedure. So here's the global environment. Um, let glob zero, uh, okay, let creates a procedure and then invokes it. So I'm going to go ahead and create a procedure down here. Um, parameter glob and body is a lambda expression. And then I'm immediately going to invoke that procedure. giving glob the value 0. And now with E1 as the current environment, I'm going to evaluate the body. The body is a lambda. The body of that is the let loc 0, etc. Okay? And then lambda, unlike let, just creates the procedure. It doesn't invoke it. So this procedure is what is returned by that outermost let. And so we're going to define make count to be that procedure. OK? Questions about this? Yes. We're never going to look at this procedure ever again. That's right. The let procedure is just use once, throw away. Okay. Um, so notice, think about what does a class need to know? Well, it needs to know the class variables. And it needs to know how to make an instance. And it does. OK, so we've achieved the goals for the class. Now I'm going to um, define C1, make count. So we invoke make count. How do we invoke a procedure? Well, we evaluate all the sub-expressions. There aren't any argument expressions to evaluate, so it's very simple. Make count is this procedure, and that's it. And then we go ahead and call this procedure with no arguments. How do we call a procedure? We make a new frame in which we bind all the formal parameters to the actual arguments. And then we use this frame to extend the environment that's in the right bubble of the procedure. Is that one. And now we do the body, which is a let. So a let is a lambda plus an invocation. So we're going to make the let procedure here. Parameter is loc. And the body is um, lambda of message, right? And then I immediately invoke that. Um, how do we invoke this? Well, we make a frame in which the formal parameters are bound to the actual argument values. And then I extend whatever frame the right bubble of the procedure points to. And now I evaluate the body, which is this lambda expression, uh, which gives me a procedure, let me draw it here. Parameter is message, and the body is a cond. And uh, that 
procedure, because this was a lambda, not a let. That was a let procedure. This is a lambda procedure. So I don't immediately invoke it, unless something tells me to. Um, instead, this procedure is what make count returns. Um, so I'm going to bind C1 to this procedure. OK? If um, I wanted to make another count, another count instance, C2, I would have another frame, frame, and procedure, and this would be C2. Okay? But I'm not going to bother doing that because I want to get to the part that's different from last time, uh, which is what happens when we invoke the dispatch procedure. So let me um, C1 quote local. OK? Well, um, we start by evaluating sub-expressions. This is quoted, so its value is the word local. And C1, we look up, and we find this procedure. So now, to do the invocation, I make a frame in which I bind the formal parameter message to the value local. Um, it says quote local over there, but you're not going to put quote local over here. Why not? Hand. Yes, in the back. Exactly. What we want in here is the actual argument value, not the actual argument expression. If you type quote local to scheme, it doesn't return quote local, it returns local. So it's the value that we are binding the parameter to. Okay. Don't ever bind a parameter to a lambda expression. Okay? It's going to be a procedure, not the thing that gave rise to the procedure. Okay, so message is the word local. I have to extend some frame. Which one? I'm in the what's the current environment when I make this frame? The current environment is G because I'm typing that yellow expression at a scheme prompt. So the current environment is the global environment. So is E4 going to extend the global environment? Who says yes? Who says no? Okay, the no's have it, but there are too many abstentions. In scheme, when you make a new environment, the new frame extends the environment that's pointed to by the right bubble of the procedure we're calling, which is to say the environment in which that procedure was created, not the environment in which we're calling it. So E4 extends E3. Okay? So now I can evaluate the body of C1, uh, which is this cond. And a message is local, so the very first cond clause succeeds. And um, what it says to do is a lambda expression. So I'm going to make a procedure. Doesn't have any parameters. And its body is a set bang and some other stuff. OK? So that's the result of calling the dispatch procedure, is that I get a method. OK? In this implementation, I didn't have an internal define giving that method a name. That method is just the conclusion of a con clause. So there's no symbol whose value is this procedure. It's just kind of sitting here. Um, 
And if I type that yellow expression to the scheme prompt, that's what it's going to return. Now, this method needs to have access to the instance's local instance variables and to its class variables, as well as, of course, the global scheme variables. Does it? Yes, it does. So this is good. 